In this episode of our Love and Marriage series, you will meet Lamar and Regina Hodges. In this video, we share some clips from the interview as a whole. If you want to see the entire interview, we ask that you would check out our playlist on Love and Marriage. Hope that you enjoy. God bless. What? Or let me put it this way. How did this beautiful union come about? Yeah. Uh, that's a story in itself. <laughs> come on. <laughs> we want to hear it. Well, good evening, everybody. Well, those of you that know me know I'm the talker in the family. So <laughs> I'll, I'll take that question. Uh, Mr. Hodges and I actually met as, as basically as teenagers. Mm -hmm. I was 14 years old. Uh, we moved in next door to his aunt. And um, one day just hanging out in my bedroom window like I like to do. I <laughs> saw <laughs> <laughs> this young man pull up in this car and he got out with his football uniform on and an afro out to here. And I was oh. like, oh, who is that? And so I, I went to my, my stepmother and I said, I just saw this young man pull up at Miss Ernest Jean's house next door you got his big old fro who is that mom and she said that's uh, her nephew his name is lamar uh -huh. and i said oh so i made my business to be in that window so i got <laughs> right so i spent a lot of time standing in that window and sure enough he pulls back up a couple days uh -huh. later and i go Psst. Through the window, huh? Through the window. He's looking around, bruh, trying to figure out where that sound is coming from. And I said, right. right here, right here, I'm in the window. And he looked up at me and he goes, hi. And I said, hi. <laughs> <laughs> he said, my name's Lamar. I said, I'm Regina. And he uh -huh. said, oh, okay, nice to meet you. And that's how we started. Now I'm a PK. Okay, so but hold on, on though. Hold on, though. How old were you at the time? I was I 14. 14. 14. Uh -huh. I was 14 years old. When you set eyes on him, huh? When I set I eyes 15. on him. Wow. And, and you were 15, Mr. Hodges? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, I wasn't allowed to date, so we would have these little rendezvous at the window. <laughs> With him standing in his auntie's <laughs> under her carport, uh -huh. in my window because my yard was fenced, so he couldn't get to the window. Right, right. Because I was in a fenced yard, but we spent time talking, getting to know each other at right. the window. window. Oh, wow. wow, wow. As I was wow. there, I went to my little sister's house and I was up there and a, and a phone call came through and it was uh -huh. my brother's. And he said, hey, somebody just called here looking for you. I said, who? He said, some, some dude named Lamar. And I said, said, who is that? I said, oh, that's Miss Mary's son. Well, he left his number. You want it? <laughs> <laughs> Sally, he had a little too. You tell him big brother. <laughs> because this was a, a younger child who didn't grow up. There's 10 of us. So uh -huh. we got two sets of kids. Right, right. So this was in the younger group that didn't know anything about them. Right, right, right. So I said, yeah, give me the number. So he gave me the number and I called and he answered the phone. Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm good. I said, your mom told me um, that she gave you my number. He said, yeah, I'm sorry to hear about your dad. I said, thank you. And then we, we small talk. Uh -huh. And he asked me, where do you live? I said, in Alabama. And I said, where are you? He said, Atlanta. I said, oh, your mom didn't tell me that. Uh -huh. And he said, um, you married? And I said, well, actually, I'm divorced. He said, oh. I said, are you married? He said, I'm actually divorced five years now. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I said, oh, wow. your mama didn't tell me none of that. <laughs> and he said, do you have children? I said, yes, I have three grown. What about you? He said, I have one grown son and two sons I've raised. I was like, oh, cool. He said, well, you know what? Alabama ain't for about three and a half, four hour ride from here. Do you mind if I come see you? I haven't wow. seen you so long. I said, absolutely. Absolutely. So after the funeral and I got back home, he flew over. I picked him up. Right. I picked him up. Now, remember now, this dude wore the baddest afro when we was in school. I'm talking oh, about, okay. I, I kid you not, I can show you a picture. Uh -huh. So I picked him up from the airport. He said, I'm going to be standing in the, in, the, in the medium right there. I saw this guy standing there and he had on his leather coat because it was cold. Yeah. And I, I honked my horn and it was him. He got in the car and he pulled that cap off. I said, ow, where my afro? Wait a minute, wait a minute, devil. And I cannot mean, tell you guys, long story short, I 
to my pastor. I said, my pastor got to lay eyes on you. Right, right, right. I need him to discern some things because I done been to hell a couple times and back in relationships. <laughs> I just can't go through nothing. He said, I don't mind. And the man of God laid eyes on this man. Uh-huh. And you see my head down. This our pastor was listening to him talk. Yeah, yeah. He said, Lamar, tell me some things about yourself. And Lamar was talking, the pastor was looking at him. And I know what this means. I've been in his membership long enough. I he 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 picking up some stuff. Uh-huh. And, right, and when Lamar right. got through talking, he crossed his hands over his chest. Uh-huh. And he looked at me, he said, sis. Like that's the one. That was it, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and six months later, right? We were married. Wow. We didn't need to court. We didn't need to do any of that. So we knew. I, that I, I I try to style marriage like a garden. For those right, of you who right. are partners, you go out there, you turn that soil over, you prepare that soil for the seed. Mm -hmm. You got to prepare the soil for the seed. But once mm -hmm. you put that seed in the ground, you can't just walk away and leave it. Right, Correct. right. That's good. Right? You got the water. Right. You got right. the water. You got to yes. make sure to keep the weeds out. You got to go out there and nurture it and pull out all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what marriage is. And a lot of young folks nowadays don't want to do that. They don't want to put mm -hmm. the work in. They don't, don't want to put work. the work in. Yeah. I was just it's telling somebody on my way uh, back to the house. I was telling that young man, he's, he's single, and he was asking me, I was telling him about the program, and he was asking me, how did y'all do it? I said, listen, it was work. Right. Mm -hmm. But right. it was worth it. It was worth it. God first, God center, God in the center of this. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And right. those tough times we have, we've had some tough times. Finan finances are pull, pull a marriage apart. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, sometimes it, it ain't always just infidelity that tears mm -hmm. it up. Right. The Bible right. says it's the little foxes that destroy the vine. Right. Right. You know, don't know how to right. talk to each other. Don't know how to respect one another. Don't right. know how to communicate with each other what you need and what you want. And that lack of concern and care. And so God had to teach me how to be a wife to Him mm, because I've right. been used to being and fighting for myself. All my mm -hmm. life, I was like the color purple before that movie came out. All <laughs> my life. I had to... You know, that leads me that leads me to the question I want to ask. This is a question for Mr. Hodges, though. Because as, as we all know, you know, you're pretty much the front person of your marriage. And and but and you're very outspoken. But Mr. Hodges, and we know that Mr. Hodges is a very laid back gentleman. Mm -hmm. How being being married to Regina Hodges. Uh, Mr. Lamar, what strategies or what did, what was the one thing you had to learn about her that you realized that you had to adjust in order for, because the marriage to work, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, yeah, love is good, mm -hmm. but, you know, sometimes love fades a little bit and then you got to remind yourself of some things or, you know, or this is good or that is good, but sometimes there's some things that can occur in a relationship or in a marriage, especially once you start co with one another, co-inhabitating with one another, that, dang, I ain't know it was like that, yeah. So then what yeah, were right. those things you had, what would you say that you learned, that you had to learn about her in order for, I'm gonna say it this way, you to get along with her. Okay, the first thing I learned was that I really needed God. Um, mm. Tell us why. Well, um, as you as you say, she she's very, um, for lack of a better word, she has a very aggressive nature. In other words, uh, if she wants something, she wants it, and uh -huh. she's not afraid to go after it. One of the things I do love about her. Um, you know, she, 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 she's hardworking. She's gonna, she's gonna give her very best to whatever it is she sets her mind to. And there, she's not gonna let too many things or too many people get in the way of, of, of getting what she, what she wants. And as you said, I'm more of the laid back kind, um, you know, and, and so I had to come to the knowledge and, and, and the understanding that um okay this is who she is this is who i am so if we're going to uh 
cohabitate and, and have a, a good marriage because like she said I had been to hell and back uh, a couple of times in some relationships and uh, going back to what she said about uh, divorce being no option that was the first thing I said to her when I asked her to marry me um, before she even answered I said before you answer I, I need to say this divorce is not an option done that been through that and after my last marriage before her, I promised God and everybody who cared to listen, uh, I would never get married again. And and I, I said to her, and I still say, I know this was divine appointment because mm -hmm. had it not been her, I truly believe I would still be single today. I, I, I had no desire, no intent to ever marry again. But uh, in, in answer to your question, um, I had to learn who she was, um, what she likes, what she doesn't like, uh, what uh, keeps her happy, what uh, makes her angry, and and just you know kind of uh, and, and it wasn't an easy transition, but I had to. I, I knew one thing. I knew for sure. I love this woman, and I was not going to let anything. Uh, separate us ever. Like Lamar, like Lamar said, um, a very aggressive nature. I ain't gonna hurt you. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna never start a fight. But I won't run from one neither. Mm -hmm. And 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 some of the stuff that you all found out in the book that I wrote was largely um, the motivation behind what my character, my personality was. And. So I've, I've been standing on my own for so long, doing mm -hmm. it my way for so long, mm -hmm. in and out of failed relationships, unforgiving, unrelenting. If you hurt me, nigga, bye. That's how I was. Right, right. Right? So mm -hmm. when we ended up getting married, I'm telling you the truth before God. I said, I need to try him and see if he can hang, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> So, I would say little stuff, and let me tell you something, because I, I live by myself, I don't need no man. And, and Lamar would just smile, and it would irritate me so bad, because I'm trying to get him, I'm trying to get a, get him riled, and he just uh -huh. like, no exit! <laughs> <laughs> you hear me talking to you? Yes. And he's saying, I hear you. Well, that's all you got to say? <laughs> yeah, well, what you want me to say? Never mind, forget it. So one day I'd ask him, I said, Lamar, could you tighten up the, the handle on the door? The doorknob shaking. He said, okay. A couple of days later, it was still shaking. I said, I thought I asked you two days ago to fix that. He said, I'm going to do it. I ain't say nothing. I waited a couple more days. He still hadn't fixed it. I thought you told me you was going to fix it. If this the kind of man you is, I'm going to tell you right now, this ain't going to work. Because I that ain't who I am. I asked you five days ago, and you still ain't did it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't having it. You got to do what you say if you ain't a man of your word. And I was just going off. Going off. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, I lost my complete mind. And when I got through yelling, and Lamar just sitting there, just watching me. Just watching <laughs> me. And you ain't got nothing to say? What, what you want me to say? I told you I'm gonna fix it and I'm gonna fix it. Well, you know what? Don't worry about it. Don't worry. And I'm and I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm gonna be transparent with y'all. I said, that's okay, because I can have another man in here fixing it tomorrow. Uh. So oh, I see how you do. Oh, this ain't gonna work. I went to the bathroom and I was standing in the sink washing my hands. And when I lifted my head up and caught my face in, in the mirror, uh-huh. God said to me, don't you dare ever speak to him like that. Wow. He is the high priest of this house. He is your head and your covering. You've been crying for years. You want to know what real love feel like? I done sent you somebody. My God. And you go back in there and you apologize. Apologize. I think we have been married about a year or so. But yeah, but Lord, I, he, I, no, I, I, Mm -hmm. We're going to deal with you. Don't tell me nothing about him. Mm -hmm. I washed my face. I came out of that bathroom. Lamar was still sitting in that living room. This is calm as a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I said, <laughs> it, I was choking on that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lamar, I need to tell you something. He said, baby, you put some man. Now, I just rimmed this man out. And this guy said, baby, what's the matter? What's the matter? I said, I just got a popo in the bathroom from God. He said, what? A popo? I said, yeah. He told me I meant that. Man, I was speaking to you like that again. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I never do it. I never do it. I promise to God. From that day. And you know what Lamar told me? He said, I know what you're trying to do. And it ain't going to work. Mm-hmm. You trying to run me off? Mm-hmm. You don't think I'ma stay? So you just trying to get ahead of the game? But he said, Regina, you my wife. I love you. I've always loved you. And God done wow. something to put us together. I ain't going nowhere. Mm-hmm.